Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, now our ship for our side-scrolling shooter can move around easily enough. Now we need it to be able to shoot, so it can shoot at our enemies, uh, slay them all, bring us glorious prizes and points. So, in order to do this, I'm probably going to split this into two parts. Uh, the first part being just how to make your ship shoot generally, and then the second part will kind of explore kind of more in depth and sort of show the different kind of options we have for like making it so holding down the button will, will shoot over time so we don't have to keep pressing it and how to you know change how our, our bullets like move around and shoot and all that kind of thing. Um, so sort of, you know, a slightly different approach to how we did it last time, because last time I just kind of went through everything all, all at once, so I'm just going to kind of split this down into two parts where, first of all, we just cover the basics, and then second second of all, for those that are interested, we, we go a bit more in depth, and we add a bit of polish and, and change things up a bit. So, on a very basic level then, we just want to make our ship uh, shoot every time, uh, every time we press a, uh, I don't know what button we should use, we'll go with could, uh, we'll go with the space bar, I guess. Space bar works. I was going to say shift, but people tend to hate it when you use shift and it creates the the sticky keys pop up on Windows. You can disable that, but I don't know. Some people have a problem with it, so we'll go with the space bar. Uh, I've already created a, an object here on uh, my obj underscore bullet, which we're going to use for shooting. If you don't know anything about objects, naming conventions, or sprites like that, please refer to my very first video on, on Game Maker Basics, because you really should know all this stuff by now. So, you know, we already have the bullet up here, and we have a very, very simple sprite that's just like a little blue blue laser, and uh, I just want to show you where I've put the, uh, it's very hard to see on there, but I put the, the origin of this bullet to be this bottom center pixel here, because it's only three pixel ride sprites, so I'll put it dead in the center here, because if you remember, our origin decides, you know, the exact coordinate of um, our object on the screen. So uh, putting it here and then place will allow us to sort of you know make sure the bullet isn't sort of inside our ship when when it fires because we're going to create the object like on top of our ship. So put the origin right to the bottom of the, the laser there. So now we have this object. Um, we basically need to make it so every time we press the space bar, um, we create that object. That's the very first thing we need to do. So if we go into our object player over here and go to add event uh, keyboard. Uh, blah, 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 space, there we go. Space, although no, we don't want space because that will do it every time we hold the object. Um, so it would create a, a laser every single frame that we're holding space bar, and that's definitely not what we want right now. So, keyboard, we want to go to um, uh, key press, even. Yeah, that's the one we want. Key press space. So, every time you like uh, the game detects the the space is pressed and it wasn't pressed the frame before, meaning you just pressed it. So like it's 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 checking space bar every frame it's seeing like zero 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 and then suddenly it sees one because you, you've pressed the space bar and it knows that the frame before was you weren't pressing the space bar, so it triggers a press and it triggers these actions. So now if we're working with drag and drop, all we need to do is go to create instance and uh, we want to create this um uh, our origin on our player should be like in the dead center of the object, I think, if I remember. So x uh, zero um, seems right. Oh, and tick this relative box here, so where the the coordinate is rel uh, related to the player object. So and set our object to object bullet. Our x can be zero because that means it's going to spawn dead in the center of our player. But our y should be something like I think the object is thirty two by thirty two. So if we type uh, minus, not 26, 16, into that, that should create the object, uh, the laser where we want it to be, which is sort of just in, at the sort of dead center point, like at the top here, is where we're looking to make that. So yeah, as you can see here, our origin is 16 by 16, so x0 and minus 16 should be right here, and as we can see from the origin of our bullet, our origin is at the bottom, so it should sort of create it just sort of sticking out of the top there. So, I mean, let's see exactly how that one looks. Uh, so, our standard movement, and now if we press space, you can see we're starting to create bullets, and you can notice the obvious problem, that the bullets aren't actually going anywhere, so that's, that's what we'll look into doing next. So, now that we're creating those objects, what we need to do is make it so that when this object is created, which, if you've been paying attention, you already know how to do, is go to 
uh, events and go to create. So on our create event, when the object is created, we need to start this object moving. So using drag and drop, that's simple enough. Using move fixed, uh, stick it direction up, and say speed, we want it to be fairly fast, I guess, so 8. Okay, and then that's pretty much it, because we set a speed there, so that speed is going to stay at 8, so every frame the bullet is going to move 8 pixels up. Now, what we also want to do is make it so we don't infinitely generate these bullets forever, and that when they pass over the top of the screen, we get rid of them, because the game doesn't need them anymore, so they're a complete waste of memory at that point. So if we go to add event, and I think it's other, outside room, so this event will trigger whenever an object, uh, not when any object, even whenever this object leaves the room, uh, these actions will trigger. And then simply enough, we want uh, destroy instance. Uh, that's in drag and drop anyway. I'll show you that one just because it's a single line of code, actually. If we delete that and we just go to um, our control code, and we bring our apparently massive execute code uh, browser up, all you need to do here is type instance destroy. I'm trying to be as quiet as possible on my mega loud keyboard. Probably doesn't uh, come across that way, but it is very difficult to be quiet on this thing. Instance destroy, uh, open bracket and close bracket because it's a function without any um, any arguments to pass over, so we just close the brackets instantly. And then optionally, you don't even need that, but like it's cleaner to put a semicolon there just to tell the game that that's the end of the line of code. Tick. So then that should work pretty much straight away. Yep. Yeah. So now every time we press space, you're shooting, uh, you're shooting some lasers, and as you can see, they're spawning in the right place. They're moving up to the top of the screen, and then every time they're passing over the top of the screen, um, they go away, and they're, they're destroyed, and they're completely, completely removed from the game. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. Um, we can change this here. Um, we don't need to use uh, an action here. We can use uh, GML instead. It's very, very simple. All you need to do is delete this, uh, replace it with code. That, If you remember from our movement tutorial, uh, we just need to set our v-speed to be equal to um, minus 8 because you know we're moving upwards so we're lowering our v-position or, or our y-coordinate, sorry, so we're moving negatively in vertical direction so we want minus 8 and then that's exactly pretty much the same as what we just did a second ago so semicolon there as well okay, compile exactly the same, no change so yep, yeah, that's pretty much uh, Pretty much everything you need to know there. Oh, oh, and this one as well. We can convert this to GML really quickly as well. Creating the instance. Um, again, it's just one line of code. Instance underscore create. You can find all of these functions just by hitting... Um, I'll show you this now, actually. If you just hit F1, uh, you'll bring up the help menu. If you go like into the index, for example, like every single line of code is... like Every function and everything like that is in here all sorts of information you can get from here when you're learning the coding and stuff. So I mean you can you can find all of these exact all of these little functions and things that like you obviously I'm just sort of pulling out of nowhere at the moment you can find them in the whole menu. So instance create bracket and then we just type in the coordinates. It's already assuming it to be um uh, no, it's not even what am I talking about. Uh, I was going to say it's assuming it to be relative, but it's not. What we want to do to make it relative, because obviously if we type something like 50, 50 in here, that would put it 50, 50 on the screen. So obviously we want it to be relative to our object, but we don't like tick a flag or anything for that. We just reference the coordinates of the object. So we type x, which is equal to the, co the x coordinate of our player object, because this is the object we're bringing the code in. So we want it to be our x, as we discussed before, and we wanted it to be our y coordinate minus 16. So that, as you might have guessed, y minus 16. And then the object we want to create is obj underscore bullet. Close bracket, semicolon, and that's that's simply how you do that. And then if we hit f5, press space, exactly the same. Shooting. So yeah, in part two we'll go over sort of uh, some more tricks for that because at the moment we're just having, we're having to press space every time to fire it. So I'll go over how to make it so you can hold down the space bar to like uh, continuously shoot like um, every like ten frames or something like that. Um, I'm gonna show you how to like adjust the sort of pattern the way it shoots, make the bullets wave around if you really needed them to, or how to shoot at a specific location. 
you know, all those kind of things we'll investigate in more detail in uh, part two of the shooting tutorial, which will be uh, shooting advanced, I guess. And this, that is pretty much shooting basics. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that, hope you learned something from it, and I'll catch you next time, guys.